This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash tipsquirrel. Hello everybody, Mike Hoffman here with a quick tip on speeding up your workflow using presets in both Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. The process we're going to review will work equally well in both programs. In fact, I'm going to show you the process first in Lightroom and then again in Camera Raw using the bridge. This past weekend, I had the opportunity to go to a couple of car shows and came away with a memory card filled with bracketed images. Because I was shooting in the daytime, in dubious lighting conditions, I had bracketed all my shots and when I got home I wanted to create a bunch of HDR renderings of my images. I knew that I was in for a lot of editing. However, there were some common steps that I knew needed to be taken with every image, and so my thoughts turned to develop presets. When you think of develop presets, you tend to think of one-click treatments that will give you a certain look or an effect for your image. While it's true that presets can do this, they can also do a lot more. In my case, I was facing the drudgery of having to perform some routine steps over and over again on multiple images. I recognize that these were the same steps that I would want to perform again in the future since I was planning on shooting another car show later the same day. Presets come to the rescue. Let's take a look here in Lightroom and I'll step you through my workflow in preparing these images to be merged to HDR. I'll start by selecting the first three images, a bracketed set with a neutral image a minus two and a plus two image. With the three images selected, I'll press D to go into the develop module. Here in the develop module, if we peek down at the lower right corner, we can see that the button says sync. On the left edge of this button is a slide switch. And if we activate that, we can see the button changes to auto sync. With this setting active, any changes that we make to one image will be automatically copied to the other selected images. And we can see the selected images here in the film strip. It's worth noting that you'll only see this choice if you have multiple images selected. If we select a single image, the sync option goes away. So we'll go back and select these three images once again. And now we've got auto sync turned on. Now we're ready to make some basic adjustments and prepare our images for Merge to HDR. Here in the Basic section, we'll go in and reduce the highlights just a bit, just to give us a little more room, and we'll open up the shadows just a bit as well. For me, this seems to give just a little more latitude with the merged HDR image. Working our way down, we'll add just a touch of clarity, not too much, and then we'll scroll down and open up the detail section. Now within the detail section, we can see the default sharpening that's applied to camera raw images. The value is 25. However, if we're planning to merge these images to HDR, any sharpening at all will be amplified during the merge to HDR process. So I'm going to want to take my sharpening down to zero for all the images where I intend to merge to HDR. This isn't my normal workflow, but for HDR, this is the best bet because I don't want those sharpening artifacts to be amplified. Also here in the detail section, we have noise reduction. The default is a value of 25 for color noise reduction and zero for luminance. I'm going to bump the luminance up a bit to about 20 and I'm going to want to save that as part of my preset. Again, with a merge to HDR process, any noise that's present in the image is going to be amplified. So reducing this noise up front will help us in the long run. Next, we'll scroll down and we'll open up the lens corrections section. In the profile tab, we'll enable profile corrections. I was shooting with a wide angle lens, as you can see here, and these corrections help to remove the barrel distortion. Again, if I disable and re-enable, you can see what's happening with the image here. Furthermore, I know that my lens tends to have a bit of chromatic aberration. So I'll switch to the color tab and here I'll choose the option to remove chromatic aberration. In the purple fringe section, I'll also bump up the amount 
to about six. My experience with this lens tells me that this is an appropriate number. You'll have to play around with your own lenses and find out what works best for you. Now these are all the changes that I intend to make on every single image in these bracketed sets that I shot. Now because I enabled auto sync, the changes were already made to the three photos that I had selected. However, I can open the left hand panel here in the develop module and in the preset section, I can click on the plus sign to save these settings as a preset. I'll give this preset a name and I'll call it prepare for HDR. I'll make sure that I have a checkbox in all the places where I've made changes to the develop settings. Then I'll click on create. Looking again here on the left, we can see now that we have a preset included in the list, prepare for HDR. Now there are several ways that we can apply this preset. We can go back to the library module. I'll press G to get to the grid view and I can highlight three additional photos. I can then press the D key again to take these back to the develop module and now in the develop module with auto sync enabled I can go to the preset list and simply click on my preset. The image is adjusted and the preset is applied to all three photos because auto sync is active. However, there's even an easier way. I'll press G to go back again to the library module in grid view and what I can do now is I can simply select a bunch of images. With these images selected, I can right click in Windows or control click on a Mac. And here in the context menu, I can choose develop settings. Here in the develop settings, we can see a section of our presets. And if we go all the way down in user presets, we can see here prepare for HDR, the preset that we just created. We click this and it applies it to all the images. And we can see them update in the previews one at a time. Now with just a couple of clicks, I prepared my images to be merged to HDR. Let's switch now to Adobe Bridge and we'll see how this process works with the Camera Raw workflow. Here I have copies of the same images and I'm looking at them in Bridge. With this bracketed set selected, I can press Control R in Windows or Command R on a Mac to open these images in the Camera Raw dialog. Here I can make changes to one image. For example, I can bring the highlights down, bring the shadows up. And here on the left in the film strip, I can select multiple images and click Synchronize. Here again, I can select the settings that I want to use just as we saw in Lightroom a moment ago. We'll cancel out of here and we'll take a look again at the settings. Now once we've made settings here, we can go straight to this tab, which is the Presets tab. And here in the Presets tab, we can click this icon at the bottom of the panel to create a new preset. We can give this preset a name and again we can select all of the categories of settings that we want to include in our preset. Now this is nearly identical to the way we set things up in Lightroom. Now I'm going to cancel out of here because I've already created a preset here in Camera Raw for this purpose. And again, I can click one time, apply it to this image, and then I can click Synchronize and apply it to the three images here in this film strip. However, there's an easier way in Bridge as well, just as we saw in Lightroom. I'm going to cancel here, and within Bridge, I'm going to select multiple images. Now I'm going to right click in Windows or control click on a Mac and I'm going to choose develop settings. Here in the develop settings we can see our presets and here's prepare for HDR, the one that we created earlier. I'll click this and we can see the images updated again in the previews here. Once again with just a couple of clicks we've prepared these images to be merged to HDR. Develop settings are typically associated with a look or an effect for your image. However, as we've just seen, we can use presets as a workflow enhancement, an efficiency boost that helps us get the heavy lifting done quickly and easily and consistently so that we can focus our efforts in more interesting areas. 
My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.